please welcome my friend, Billy Porter. Phenomenal to have you here. Thank you. It's so good to be here. I'm so excited for you. No, 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 no. I, I'm excited for you. It was so interesting. Billy tweeted overnight. Oh, he tweeted about not being an overnight success. You said, so many of my new fans tell me that they didn't know I can sing. Well, I put together a little Spotify playlist to walk you through my <laughs> musical history. He said, take a listen, Diva. I mean, you've been at this and doing it at high excellence. 30 years. 30 years. Yes, yeah, I started. Mm. I, you know, I trained at Carnegie Mellon University uh, in the drama department, and I, second semester of my senior year, I moved to New York to be in the original company of Miss Saigon. That was 1991. So, really? Yeah. Mm. So I've been going ever since. And before that, too. And before that, we were in the commercial break playing one of your songs, and I said, that's Billy Port and this woman on front row. I said, yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I mean, you know, we talk a lot about the journey, and I tell people all the time, you can look at the end of the book, but what are the pages yeah. that it yeah, takes yeah, yeah. to make someone like you? Yeah. So when you look at this point in your life, did you expect this? Did you know it was coming? Because you are... You're 50? 50. 50. Yes, I turned 50 last year. Last year. Yeah. Did um, you know being 50 in this industry would be so good? No. I, you know, I spent the majority of my life um, in the masculinity race. What does that mean? Trying to be masculine enough to get a gig. It's all about masculinity and especially for a black man. Um, if you're not masculine enough, you're dismissed. Mm. Um, you can't work, you don't get jobs, you don't get work. It's, it's, it was a real thing for me at the beginning, well, it, for my whole life. It wasn't just life. the business. Did you feel that you had to fake it until you make it? Well, I was just trying to be masculine enough, mm. you know, to get the gig and then when I was about 40, I said, I'm going to take myself out of that race. I'm going to take myself out of that because clearly I'm not masculine enough by society standards to do anything. So were you not getting work? I mean, I yeah. knew you, you had I mean, I worked, but... You worked, well, you had kinky boots. And yeah, you... that, I'm talking pre-kinky boots. Pre-kinky boots. I'm talking pre-kinky boots. So you boots. really weren't getting gigs? I, you know, I was getting jobs, but I was getting the kinds of jobs that were... Um, what I call, <laughs> you know, the magical sissy. Really? The magical Negro sissy that sprinkles fairy dust all over everybody. And it's not a real person. It's not a human being. Hmm. You know, it's an archetype. It's a clown. And it's what everybody on the outside feels comfortable with. But the moment that it's about a real human being and it's about me telling my story, it's go sit some, go somewhere and shut up. Which is why Pose was so incredible. Yes. Because it was no longer this stereotype. We ran into each other. We were flying to Boston. Yes, we were. We're like on a 4 a.m. <laughs> flight. We're both like eye masks, hiding in front of people. And you, as they say, you shook me because you told me this story about Ryan Murphy. When yeah. you got the call from him mm -hmm. about unpacking some of the pain from the yeah. childhood, yeah. some of the rejection in the early part of your career yeah. to get where you are now. Yeah. What did Ryan tell you? Well, you know, we, we had been working for, for the first season pretty much, and he called me to lunch, and um, he essentially called me out because he said, okay, look, I want you to lean into the joy. And I took a, you know, I took a breath, and he's like, I know what it's been. I know how hard you've worked. I know it's hard to trust where you are now. But I need you to know that you're here. I got your back. You don't ever have to worry about anything again. And, you know, for a person who spent 13 years not working, bankruptcy, you know, all of the common things that everybody talks about. I went through them all, yeah. you know, and it just took my breath away. You know, you really do just need one person in a position of power, huh. you know, to open the door 
I wasn't asking anybody to give me anything for free. I came with all of the tools, all of the talent, the entire skill set, and now the world yeah. gets to see that part of yeah. it. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's about opportunity. You know, if you don't have the opportunity, you can't do it. Yeah, if you're not let in the room where If you're it not let in the room, yeah. As, and, you know, for you, in, in the cast of Pose, you've done something so incredible because I'm sure many people thought there's no way, you know, middle America will watch that show. And I, I, I don't like that term, middle America. I'm like, there's no middle. No. If you show people something of quality, if you don't make people into caricatures, suddenly we're all watching something different. Human. Human. Human stories. Yeah. We're all human yeah. beings. And now you are this powerful force for the LGBTQI community. And I woke up to this, you know, Little Nas, I'm obsessed with Little Nas. <laughs> the only other person other than you this fashion game is so long. Uh, there was this rapper, um, Pastor Troy is his name. He's an Atlanta-based rapper. And he went on social media and he attacked Little Nas X <laughs> for this outfit, basically saying, if I have to wear this to get a Grammy, um, then uh, count me out. And then he went on to accuse Hollywood or music industry mm -hmm. of pushing this out on our kids. To his credit, Little Nas X tweeted back, I look good in this picture on God. He said, I look good. <laughs> and he didn't fall for the bait. Yeah. But now mm -hmm. you're one of the leading voices that yeah. helps pave the way for this kid to be able to clap back and not feel afraid. Yes, yeah. I, you know, <laughs> I never had an example. You know, I never had an example of who I was in the mainstream reflected back at me ever. And it's been intentional for me. You know, the moment that I decided to love myself enough, you know, you have to love yourself enough. Maya Angelou says we teach people how to treat us. Yeah. So I had to teach the world how to treat me. Yeah. But I needed to treat myself right first. Right. You know, I needed to figure out how to love myself right first in the face of abject rejection for su simply being who I am. When you see Little Nas X have this voice that you help pave, how do you feel when you see him? It's, I feel, it's overwhelming. Mm. Um, you know, it's a different conversation now. You know, I've been saying for years, um, this conversation is not about acceptance and it's not about tolerance. Because those two things require something on the outside to give me validation. Have you ever been worried that you were too vocal? I mean, you, you take strong stances and you say what you mean and you mean what you say. Have you worried that in this part of your career, being so vocal would hurt where you are? No. It, 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 wherever I am as a result of my truth is where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> so, you know, I started telling the truth. Yeah. And here I am. So you started telling the truth. And here I am. When I wasn't telling the truth, I was bankrupt. Wow. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> Let's be real. Let's be real. <laughs> I spent a lot of years not telling the truth, and I was bankrupt and unemployed. And now here you are. And now here I am. <laughs> and you know, I, it shocks me just as much as it shocks everybody else. <laughs> Because I never, I never, ever, ever once in a million years thought that it would be my authenticity that thrusted me to the forefront. Well, speaking of your authenticity, you don't ever fake it on the red carpet. <laughs> when we come back, we're going to talk with Billy about being this fashion and culture icon. I'm going to dissect some of his looks. <laughs> we're going to find out how that hat moved. Was that battery operated? <laughs> and Billy is on the cover of Allure. We'll be right back. Yeah. It's Fantasia. What is? Yes. Oh, I love that. Sing it next season. I love that. You I'll sing it next season. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. It's Shut too high. Shut <laughs> for the rest of your life. Ooh. Stronger than, than ever, ever, ever. ever. <laughs> I <love laughs> yeah, I like it. it. I love it. It's okay. hooky. It's hooky. It's hooky. Yes. Okay. I mean, I have questions. The motorized hat yes. from the Grammys. Yes. How did that come to be? Battery. It was so 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 I was at the AMAs and Billie Eilish was on the red carpet before me, and she was wearing some Gucci thing on her face. And I was like, ooh, that's cute, but I've spent way too much time in my life being in the back. I need to show my face. <laughs> so I wouldn't have my face covered like that. And then my stylist was like, 
Well, we can have we can cover your face and then have it open, and that was his idea. And you said this is forever Monday mood. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it's Monday. Right. And I, you have such an infectious smile. Like, how did you keep the straight face? I would have just bust out laughing. I would have bust out laughing. You know, out. I have always loved fashion. I have always loved, you know, like I came up in the in the in the first supermodel. Yeah. You know, phase when when it first yeah, exploded. Beverly Johnson coming on our show next week. Yeah. So you know, I've always played with the like. <laughs> you know, the, the okay. dropped face. We have a so. five-year-old five year picture of Billy. Do we have that? Oh, did, you no. have, did you have the drop face then? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all of these clothes around you. All the clothes laid out. They just... They know who I was. They, did, they knew who you were. This ain't new. <laughs> this ain't new. Look. look. <laughs> oh, Look at that little boy. I know. It's a, and now, look at him. He's here on the Lord <laughs> Magazine. <laughs> You crying. <laughs> I knew we were going to cry, but I, okay. I got on fake lashes, so I can't cry. Um, you're going to be send in the new Cinderella. Yes. Mm. As the fairy. As the fairy godmother. godmother. It's called the Fab G, <laughs> and I keep going around saying I'm playing the Whitney Houston part. <laughs> That's a dream come true Is for that me. When you got the call that you were going to be playing, you know, once again, it's like. It's beyond anything that I could have ever imagined. Yeah. And my dreams have always been big, but they've always been predicated on things that I've seen, springboarded off of things that I've seen before. Yeah. You know, this moment in my life has taught me to dream the impossible. Mm -hmm. And there are no limits on any of it. Yeah. Um, and that is such a gift and such a blessing, and it's empowering. So do you, so looking at the things, you, are you going to start a fashion line? Uh, yeah, I would love to start a fashion line. Yep. Um, you almost started an EGOT. That's when you get the... Emmy, the Tony, the Grammy, because you just Oscar. need the Oscar. I just need the Oscar to complete. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? <laughs> Which, that will be manifest into reality. And yeah. the next season of Pose starts taping in March. In March, and I'm directing an episode. You're directing I'm an directing episode? I'm directing an episode, and I'm... I have a new single coming out in February for this political season, so look out for that. And, um, you know, I'm starting a production company. It's time for me to be the... The one in charge. The one in charge. I mean, what do you do in your downtime? Like, what's, what's relaxation like? I'm for... trying to figure that out. So you, you know, I'm not good at that. You? I'm not good at that. I just started. My husband has started, has been helping me figure that out. We went to um, Miyamo Spa in Sedona a couple weeks ago. I've never in my life experienced anything like that. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is what they talking about. <laughs> You know, I mean, like, pamper, pamper. Like, you get there, you put on the robe, yeah. and you don't take it off for three days. And you just unlock. You go to massages and the facials and the past life regressions and the rubs <laughs> and the, you know, and the wraps and the scrubs. I was like, oh, OK, <laughs> I'm coming back here. You're coming back here. I'm coming back here. <laughs> this is what they talk about, relax. <laughs> so you just, you have not learn to unwind in all of this. There's, there was no time. Yeah. You know, for so, you know, I grew up in the ghettos of Pittsburgh. It's like, you go to work and you go to work and you go to work and you go to work. Right. Period. That's just what we do. You know, there were no finances. There were no, <laughs> my sister. That's your sister there. <laughs> there were no extra, you know, there was no extra money to do anything. Right. You know, now it's like, oh, wait, like, I actually, I'm retraining myself. Have you splurged on anything? I have. I splurged on that trip. Oh. <laughs> for me and my husband. That's a big... That was a big... She ain't cheap, honey. <laughs> you know, you get that bill from vacation, you're like, um... <laughs> OK, I guess I need to do this. <laughs> I need to work again. <laughs> we have uh, one of the biggest and most influential houses uh, coming on to perform after this break. Yes. They are a part of the culture that inspired Pose. To see them also get the love, what does that mean for you, that you were inspired by your journey and now it's impacted these young kids? Well, I just feel like, you know, none of us are free till we're all free, mm. right? <laughs> and so the space that we're in, where it's seemingly, we're seemingly so divided, yeah. is actually historically the moment when the people come together more than ever, yeah. because we have to because we're required to, otherwise the whole thing will implode. And so creatively, we have always been at the forefront. Yeah. 
as creatives, of architects of change. You know, and so this is an example of that. We get to be architects of change. We get to put that kind of energy out in the world and change it. Change the molecular structure of what's inside somebody's heart. Yeah. You know, and that is what creates the change for good, because well, that's what we need. You change have been that state, change, change for agent. good. You have been a change agent. You are everything. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I can't wait to see <laughs> what's next.